Ardbeg Ugdal, 54.2% ABV, about $100 US in 2020. Is this a peated sherry bomb? What's up guys? Hey guys, it is Scotch Fordham. <laughs> Four guys on a Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. <sighs> uh, do you like the peat? <laughs> the smoke? Like well then, we got something for you. Do you no. like the NAS? It is an NAS. 54.8? Dude. 54.2%. Dude. 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 Do you like the punch in the face? So Ardbed Ugadal. Ugadal. From, name derived from the lock where they get their peated water. You got a better accent than I do. Peter <laughs> Walter. I I'm can't pouring. talk through that. So, uh, again, Ardbeg is well known for the non-age shipment whiskey. Some of their best whiskeys. The, all of the committee releases, um, Ugadal, Anno, Corey Vrecken, all non-age. Their, their uh -oh. oldest standard release is what? Ten year. Ten years old. That's it. So we were just that's talking it. about that before this this review, that that's really interesting. That They're, that they're not messing around when with this uh, age year. I, I feel like... They're saying when it's ready, it's ready. Let's do this. I'm not going to argue with them. Well, and they keep in mind, what they're doing. our bag is known for their heavily peated, mm -hmm. rich peat flavors, you know, with some sherry in them. And you, the older they get, the less peated they become. Mm. So if you want that rich flavor, that rich peat that is true. smoke, you want them young. That's a good point. And if you use the right barrels, they age enough and you get enough flavor out of them and you get the harshness out of it, that you get what you want. So what are you smelling? I smell our bag. <laughs> so, uh, so Mark just uh, rubbed the bottle. Um, it, it, honestly, our bag to me has one of the founding smells that I get on an art bag is like a roasted peanut. Oh, dude, I'm getting peanuts on this right now. Uh, and so anytime I smell on a peanut whiskey, the first guess is our bag. Even if it's right or wrong, I'm like, I don't smell like an art bag to me. But, it smells like an um, bag, yeah. yeah. This, we've reviewed this. 87. Review number 87. I have no idea what was scored it. I remember getting that bottle. Ago. I remember bringing that bottle down those stairs and being like, guys, look what I just bought. I don't know what it is, but we got to try it. And we opened it up and we all took a sniff and we put the cork back in and said, no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's we all took a sip. Oh, it sat in the shelf, too, for quite some time because we were scared of it. We're not old enough for this. <laughs> we were scared of it. <laughs> and, then we, and then a camping trip came along and then we're like, hello, lover. <laughs> yes. It's, a, it's an acquired taste. you you got to be brave about it. And if you've never had Pete before... It may take you a couple times don't to start get here. to it, you don't know? Start here. I mean, we started here. I, I think you can do it, but don't be discouraged if you pour a glass of this and you've never had Pete before and you're like, this what is the? awful. And it stunk <laughs> up my whole house. <laughs> it did. It and I, now I don't know what to do. It's like having burnt bacon I, I mean, in your house. Have a sip, try and acclimate your palate to it, and then come back and try it again because it's it's an acquired taste. So what do we get at least? Well, so I know a lot of people love this bottle. I know that oh, this, this, yeah. this bottle is extremely popular, um, but you know what? So are the Koi Vrecken and the Anno, and I mean, honestly, that Koi Vrecken is really good. It right? is, yeah. Um, so $99 bottle, Ugadal. I don't even know how long this has been around. It's obviously been around five years. Um, I don't know either, actually. More than that. Oh, I, yeah, at least. It's, it's mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes? Actually, that's not that full. Mashed potato. I'm excited. To, uh, before we get started, I, I, I'm excited to re-review this one because, I, I, to our point, it was harsh, but I remember actually really enjoying it. And it's been it's been a few years since we've really got into it yeah. again. So this is kind of like a, this is one of those core bottles for us that we, if we put it out there and we're like, man, our big Ugo deal, it's right good, there on top. A good fire pit, a good cigar. Yeah. Well, and it's a touchstone that we talk about a lot in our other reviews, so I think it's interesting to yeah. go back and, and kind of re-review those every once in a All while. All right, so what do you get on the nose? Hint of matchsticks. <clears throat> uh, Burnt grass, grassy. Burnt matchsticks? Mm -hmm. Honestly, my first nosing of it mm -hmm. was sweet. Really? I got I a guess. lot of sweet notes. And then I, I got grass. like that that burnt match, like a little bit of hint Not of... Not sulfur, but kind no, of No, but that... that yeah. Like burnt cordite or whatever yeah, it is, that, yeah. you know. Um, because on the nose, it's not it's not that that peated on the mm -hmm. nose. I mean, no, it, and it, it obviously is peated when you know if if you drink this, my, my wife says the same thing. Oh, you're in the peat tonight, you know. Even if I'm across the room, because you can smell it. But you, when you direct mm. hit the glass, it's got a lot of sweetness and sherryness in it that that really brings out. Oh man, I'm getting wood there. It's like cedar. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. 
Oh. There's one word that really stands out for me on the sweet factor is brown sugar. Man. Really? I can chew on that. That's a chewy dram. It's like a clump of brown sugar sweetness mixed with lovely smoke and peat and earth and grass and... I like the fact that it's got a lot of different things going on in your mouth all at the same time. Like usually when you take a sip of a whiskey you get front palate, mid palate, back palate, finish, finish right? <laughs> and this is like, well down the middle we're going to give you smoke down the middle and you're going to have to contend with but that on for a minute. Side of those but tons. on the sides it's kind of sweet and Fruity. tingly and it's it's like good cop bad cop going on in your mouth, right? Like one of them's kind of yelling at you and being mean, and the other one's like, "Nah, man, come here. Let me give you a hug. It's gonna be okay." <laughs> she got and, annoying. And it's, uh, I mean, it's just a fun glass to drink. It really it's is. It's delicious, though. It's um. Well, and the amazing thing to me, at fi- you know, at fifty-four point two percent, I could, I took a sip on that and. I could hold it in my mouth and kind of wash it around to get the flavor, and it wasn't like it blowing my head out. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, you. they say that the oiliness of peat helps reduce some of that alcohol burn. <sighs> they must have done that here. Now I'm getting is... leather in the nose. I sat here for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I actually <sighs> oh, washed oh, it around really good and got some tropical fruit notes in there, like like <laughs> like a pineapple papaya thing going on, but nice and light, like roasted fruits. You know what I mean? So it's got that like char on it that brings out the sweet. But oh, it's, yeah. Roasted it's pineapple. like a deep sweet. A grilled pineapple. Roasted pineapple, pineapple yeah. is nice. Yes, I, I can see that. One thing you notice too when you do, mm. I, I tend to do this more when I get into peats, is I like to get the nose deep and then I come different angles at it because it does make a difference. Yes. Yeah. Huge Absolutely. difference. Absolutely. And it's going to change over the next five minutes because yeah. that peat's going to waft off a little bit. Right. Well, that, that sherry is coming out hard now. That's what I'm getting on well, the finish, is that sherry. Yeah. And that's something we don't know. Okay, our bag's pretty secretive it about the maturation. About they sherry on they don't yeah. tell you, they don't give you much detail on their maturation. Luscious, sweet, raisiny tones of old ex sherry casks. So there's a sitting gift Tones portion. of that, but. Doesn't mean it was ex sherry. Exactly. Um, so we don't know what that's about. Uh, what else was I going to say about it? There was another, another thing about just this particular bottle that was interesting to me. Oh, so when, when I. When I take you know some some everything. spillage or off the bottom and you know I wash it and smell that it is so much lighter. That's where I'm getting that peanut. When I smell it in the glass, I'm not getting that because the vapor is just so much yeah. more potent and strong. Oh, um, yeah, you have to you have to sniff it like like Drew said. You know you really got to back up sometimes or come from an angle. And I I really like your technique to rub it on your hands when it's when it's a peated whiskey. I, I, I get a lot more out of it. Yep. And I do get the peanuts on this one. Yeah, that, I, th- I think that's an art big character. Me. That, that's an Ardbeg character because I know that Ardbeg 10 is all sorts of, you know, peanut toasted corn chip kind of. Yeah. That. So I, is that is that from their new make? That's their new that, make. Yeah. And what you have here is their new make with a, with a lot more barrel influence, I think. I think this has more of that shared cask and some other things. I mean, it is darker and they say it's not aged or not, non-colored, but <laughs> non-aged. Okay, no, so we get so much stuff out of this, man. Gosh, non-aged, straight out non-aged still. statement. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little bit more marshmallow uh, creaminess in the nose with water on it. Yeah, so it's, it's not it's non-aged, but just straight not aged. Not <laughs> aged at all. This is it's like a s'more without the chocolate and graham cracker, just like the charring marshmallow. and. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, see, the irony is I, I knew we were going to review Pete. I should have taken a Benadryl because I honestly, after nosing Pete for as much as we're doing, I start to get stuffed up. Mm-hmm. And it gets harder and harder. Really? Yeah. I, it's just a, it's just a reaction I have to it. Obviously, yeah, I'm allergic my, my reaction. My sinuses are kind of closing off. My sinuses close up, so it's like if I don't get what I'm going to get early, mm. I'm going to miss it. I'm oh, going to enjoy wow. the hell out of the whiskey, but I'm not going to get what I need for a review. Um, so some water really brought that finish up more than what I had before. Before I had what part of the finish? So Ooh. the the before I had was like a hint of sherry. I, I was thinking like dark cherries or something with there. Now with the water, it really blended that finish up and got more robust sherry richness to it than I, what I had before, almost like a dark chocolate. Um, not sli- not as bitter, but... Yeah, I'm getting some chocolate in that now. Yeah. It, it's got a little bit of a different mouthfeel now, too, to me. Um, mm-hmm. a, a little bit more... Smoother, uh, creamier? Yeah, creamy, I guess. Yeah. Creamy. This is delicious. Good Lord. This is going to be, this is gonna be wow. a good number. Yeah. 100 but, bucks, but 100 bucks for an NAS... It's hard to swallow, period. However, this is done right so far. I mean, this is 
outstanding. Okay. And and the ABV is up there. So I mean, you got some good bonus points. Right, going on. You, your whiskey's in your whiskey. So I have no idea what we scored it before. I really no, don't no. want to know until after we we'll hit find the record button. Thursday. Stop. Yeah, we'll, we'll look this up on Thursday because I'm very curious to see how we're going to come in on this. Um, going to rock paper scissors and see who goes first. Alright, I'll go. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, oh, it is a It's the wheelhouse. wheelhouse. wheelhouse Alright, so <laughs> this is a great great uh glass in here. So what I'm so what I'm going to I'm gonna try and describe kind of the whole um, experience here. Mm -hmm. So we've we've had several sips of it, we've nosed it, we've done all that. And what I've got now is like this the edges of the cave are smokiness. And so that's kind of hanging out there. But then down the center you get the sweetness and the creaminess and the raisins and plums and that kind of thing. And as you just sit there with the finish and let it let your mouth kind of live together, it, it, it just <laughs> is a good balance. It just it just hangs out together well through the entire palate from initial sip all the way through the finish. It kind of holds that that multiple flavors at the same time, which is unusual. Usually you like you say you get the transition, you get yep. sweet, then you get peat, and then you get smoke and you're done. And where this kind of holds all that together, um, hundred dollars. It's not cheap, but man, if you want an expression that balances the rich, heavily peated, <laughs> and then a sweetness to it too, this is like a peated sherry bomb. Ah, uh, maybe, uh, maybe. maybe. Well, can we coin that term? I don't know. It's uh, we'll see. Uh, so this is easily a three five for me. Um, this is a great whiskey. Could it be a four? <laughs> What kind of cave is he talking about? I don't know. It's cave I'm still, I still. He hasn't come back to the cave. I'm still waiting, man. Is that your mouth? I don't know. <laughs> as, as, as the whole mouth experience here, you get the you get the smoky edges on the on the cave, and then it, and then you get the mouth that it's sweet and it's good. Good lord, this is a good dram. Yeah. Wow. So you did, you did three five. Three five. Gosh, I, I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm see if I can top myself up or down. I'm at least a three five right now. At yeah. least. At least a three five. Dang. Because it's so good and it's complex, it's got all the things that you. I mean, it's almost like a perfect blend of what you get from from the the sweetness of. I mean, you said sugar, plums, raisins, uh, dark cherries, uh, the normal smoky, peaty, earthy stuff that you're going to get. And and, it, and I think you said it either. It just it it's like a freaking maze in your mouth and the different sides and the palate and the finish. <laughs> but it all That's blends. But it all blends perfectly. <laughs> And whether you like it neat or with water, hey, guess what? The ABV is up. You can play with it. And so it's perfect for that. And you can bring it up or down. And yeah, you can have different plays point. in your mouth. I love Sounds that. Like four to me. I can play with it. It's 100 bucks for NES. But, man, if you want something like in the PD Ardbeg house, this is great. I'm going to give it a uh, – I got to give it a four. I mean, no. why not? I have to. It's really good. All right. All right. It's on me now. I gotta figure this out. Mm, How you doing, man? All I'm right. not surprised that he gave it a four. He likes to play with it, right? <laughs> so every day, <laughs> every day. I. This is one of those bottles when people say, "Oh, NAS whiskey. Why would you want to drink that?" Then I'm like, "Here you go, dude. Let me let me let, <laughs> let me let <laughs> you know a little this something. Is. Why <laughs> this is one of those whiskeys you didn't want to drink, you know? And, and it's it's a really great bottle. Um, neat. It's it's approachable, but it's it's got some. It, it's a potent glass. Like you want to approach it with some caution, right? Like Careful. like the you know the killer bunny, I guess. Uh, but it's <laughs> it's big and bold, and it's got a lot of things going on, and it keeps you active and thinking about the glass and engaged with it the entire time from the initial sip well through the finish. I mean, the finish lasts a really long time. Um, with water, it brought out a creaminess to it. Um, it lost a little bit of the peat edge for me. Um, so I thought it got just not really off kilter, but I think that it, it wasn't quite as complex with water on it as it was neat. So I probably wouldn't put water on it, but just as a, you know, a, a note, I think that's why I'm I'm not quite at a four, but it's a wonderful glass. Um, everything's pretty well balanced. It's got unique flavors. You can dig for stuff. It, it's got some depth and complexity. So I might give it a three five. It it just with the water missed it just by a hair on the yeah. floor. It's fair. It's fair. 
All right, I gotta give Andrew some props. Uh, I honestly, when he said, can we coin the term, I was like, not on this dram, you can't. <laughs> Stick your nose in that glass, oh, you're getting sherry right now. Yeah. I mean, it's like, am I drinking a sherry? I mean, it just smells like freaking Oloroso, and now I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is this? All right, so that's awesome. Um, this this is a glass that, in the beginning, you do have to step back a little, be a little bit careful. It, it comes out swinging. It's a Mike Tyson, right? Yep. The bell rings, and if you stick your nose in there, he's going to let you know he's there, <laughs> right? And so you just approach with caution, but over time, it, it, the, over the course of your dram, it is just going to get exquisite. Um, I actually really like the water on it. I think the water made it so much more... Pro- I was able to get a lot more out of it. Mm-hmm. Of course, I didn't drink it neat. We, we drink a lot of cats drink whiskey neat. I love cats whiskey. But I think a few drops on this really opened it up and made me capable of getting things that I couldn't get when it was neat. I absolutely... Right now, that is an incredible glass. That being said... I got to give it a 3.5, and I'm going to give it a 3.5 because I got to leave myself a little bit of room. I know what, I'm, I'm judging this in my mind against its siblings. Um, this is a great, this is a great art bag. This is a delicious bottle. I think, I've got an unopened bottle in my bar, and I would replace it, and I will replace it when it's gone. That's, it's just that good. I'm going to give it a 3.5 with an underscore of a 4. I, it's good. It's what it's siblings just, are you comparing it to? Well, I don't want to say it's better. I, I think the Koi Frank is better. Yeah. I don't know about that. I, 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 I don't remember. I know we had it recently. Well, I'm, I'm literally reliving the lineup in my head. We sat there and we went down the row of them. And I, I remember where I scored this one. So I've got to, no, I've got I, to I try to... this one higher. <laughs> um, and you might have. I'm th- I'm just, I remember yeah. me. I'm paying attention. To, but I am very shocked at how much sherry came out of this glass towards the end. I, it's really incredible. Uh, I know why it's popular. I know why people love it because it's really yeah. good. It's I mean, a really it's, good glass. I mean, it's end of the day, it's a damn I'll, good bottle. If you balk at NASs, then you're the fool, man. Yeah, this is a good bottle. I'll take your bottle of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all day and all night. So <laughs> That's three a five three six five, two five three five four. Yep. And, and awesome. It's score. probably worth a three seven five because I mean all of us are. Right on that three yeah, five. Four. We're all verge on four, yeah. so I mean it's it's, a, it's a good bottle. You're not gonna go for a hundred bucks. You're not gonna go wrong. That's no. right. Whether you're three well, five or four, the point is buy if this you can bottle. handle Pete. Yeah, if, if you, you can handle if, Pete, if that you, is the if you prerequisite. Pete, do not buy this. But if you're willing to try Pete and you're willing to give it some time and not throw the bottle after the first sip. You'll find greatness in this. If Come someone pours it. your glass and you can't handle a peat, let it put a little water on it, let it sit for 30 minutes. Exactly. It'll be totally. It'll be a share bomb. It's a lover. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you on Thursday. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.